being a desirable location for farming and ranching, Baker City was founded during the Civil War. After gold was found in the area, Baker City attracted a lot of mining business owners. Baker City expanded rapidly after the railroad was brought to its doorstep in the 1880s, using mined volcanic tuff and bricks to construct high-quality structures. Because Baker City became the destination to spend your money on fun and luxury, to live and enjoy newly discovered wealth, it earned the nickname Queen City of the Mines. Due to the influx of wealthy people, as well as mine owners and investors who had made their fortune through the gold mining industry, a hotel was constructed in 1889 as an opulent, high-class hotel. After buying the property shortly after the turn of the century, mining investor Albert Geyser rebranded it as the Geyser Grand Hotel in 1902. The hotel was built to cater to the needs and amusement of the wealthy. The hotel was found by travelers, who returned time and again. All guests luxuriated in the amenities and style of the hotel. There was also adult services and gambling. Large window-like openings in the wine cellar's basement section that previously led to underground passageways, allowing gentlemen to enter secretly, without being observed by any outsiders. This brothel operated throughout Prohibition, and into the 1940s until law enforcement took substantial steps to curtail these practices. As many of the opulent hotels during World War II, were temporarily used as hospitals for wounded soldiers, it was eventually converted into a veterans hospital. The hotel eventually opened for business again after World War II, but its appeal was waning. The building eventually turned into a significant renovator opportunity, and needed some significant maintenance because it wasn't fixed when necessary to the extent that would stop its deterioration. In order to once again be a functional commercial property in 1968, the Geyser Grand Hotel structure desperately needed restoration. Many said the huge project was too far gone to be saved, and that a large amount of financial capital would be required. The idea was that it should eventually be demolished to make room for a parking lot. So once the Paint Your Wagon movie that was filmed there was finished, the structure was boarded up and kept unoccupied for 25 years. Mr. and Mrs. Dwight Sidway, experienced historical preservationists, recognized the potential and saved it in the 1990s. They reopened the Geyser Grand Hotel in 1998, much to the delight of a new clientele, after spending $7 million and four years of painstakingly hard work to restore it to its former magnificence. It now has 30 rooms with all the newest conveniences. After the reopening, reports of spirits became a regular occurrence to guests as well as hotel workers. The kitchen is haunted by the male ghost of a former chef who lost his head. A strange light was seen floating around the kitchen by a Japanese film crew. He occasionally shows up with no head visible, dressed as a cook. This tragic victim seems to still be a little distraught over his tragic demise. This entity slams doors and hurls pots and pans, possibly still enraged by the horrible way in which he passed away. A large pallet of glasses that he had levitated, floated in the air, and then crashed to the ground. A chef who works there currently saw this happen. One entity is that of another man. This murder victim might be the cowboy who dated another female spirit, who allegedly committed suicide as a result of his passing. Although this cowboy visits the Grand Hotel, he doesn't seem to be upset. Possibly in the early days and most likely at the gambling table, this cowboy was shot inside the hotel. He did receive justice for his own death, as the murderer was apprehended, put on trial, and found guilty, the first murder conviction in Baker City. Another haunted location is the bar. Maybelle Geyser had her own seat set aside in the downstairs bar while she was still living. Anyone who ventured to sit in her chair for a while after she passed away experienced chilly fingers pinching them. She might have changed a little and stopped doing this after the pub reopened, or maybe a chair has been placed where she used to sit. It appears that either a male or female being enjoys Budweiser beer. Despite making sure it was sealed off, bartenders find that the Budweiser tap has been unsealed and that beer is foaming out on cue. Every region of the hotel is thought to be a paranormal hot spot, but room 203 is one of the most frightening. 
There are numerous paranormal auditory sounds that occur frequently. It appears that noisy party loving spirits gather in the room directly above room 203 to party and play music. Putting her ear to the wall, the current owner has heard people having a good time. She also felt the vibration of music in this location. Another highly active room for paranormal phenomena is said to be room 302. Maybell Geyser's ghost stays in that room, which is located beneath the clock tower. She enjoys touching and rearranging the jewelry worn by visitors that she admires. She has been observed taking the complimentary refreshments that were placed out for the guests. Some of the other entities include one of a young girl's spirit, she has also been observed and encountered on the third floor, and in the hotel's basement. She most likely roams the entire hotel. Also a dancer from the 1920s, she is dressed in a scarlet corset, and headgear with a tall peacock feather, she is visible from the waist up. Also reportedly an old woman from the 1930s, one source described her as nice, and as wearing a 1930s era violet antique dress. Another is a woman with black hair and a flowing blue Victorian dress, she is identified as the lady in blue. In front of the stunned guests, she has glided up and down the magnificent staircase. In a room called the Rain Room, the ghost patiently waits for the visiting guests to go to bed, it shares the room with guests who enjoy taking showers. Then as if someone else is bathing, guests hear the shower coming on and splashing. Once over the course of a three-hour investigation, a paranormal investigator repeatedly heard the name Wayne called out. A few days later, he came across Presley Wayne, while conducting research. He was an 18-year-old who had been voted Nashville's Performer of the Year in 1998, and was being hailed as an emerging country music sensation. Young Presley Wayne was discovered dead, having suffered a gunshot wound to the head, the evening following his performance at the Geyser Grand. So what do you think of the Grand Geyser Hotel? Let us know in the comments below. And as always please like and subscribe.